morning. So I'm uh, Silvio, and I'm the founder of Algorand. So let me tell you a little bit ab about Algorand. At Algorand, we believe that a public permissionless uh, pure proof of stake blockchain is very much you know, a need. And we have a vision for the technology required for really adopting and allow everybody to participate. And uh, we know that the technology really is the critical aspect to realize um, a borderless economy. So speaking of technology, let me tell you about our technology. But let me start first with the ones we already know. The popular approaches to uh, uh, prior approach are a proof of work. And uh, is a great idea, right? You know, um, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Nakamoto's or the Nakamoto's, or many they, they were, they were a great idea for the time. It was a great first idea. However, it is very costly. We end up uh, hitting the planet uh, very soon. And it's actually necessarily very slow to avoid forking. So you produce a block every 10 minutes. You cannot actually accelerate it. Now, expensive and fast, I understand. Expensive and slow is a harder sale. And on top of it, somehow, it ends up de facto being uh, centralized. So the Bitcoin uh, blockchain is right now controlled by free mining pools. Is this uh, decentralized? I don't think so. So next uh, idea is a delegated proof of stake. And that is a um, common and uh, easy to grasp idea. I say, so look at those uh, 21 people over there. Look how honest they look. You know what? I believe it will continue to be honest going forward. So this being the case, why don't we put them in charge to choose the next block on behalf of all of us? So in delegated proof of stake, essentially, you don't even make an attempt of des decentralization. You are centralized from the get-go. Next idea is a bonded proof of stake. Say, oh, we allow 20 people. We allow. 200 people, we allow as many people who want to push some money in the middle of the table where they cannot touch it anymore. And those are the people in charge of choosing the next block on behalf of all of us, right? And if they misbehave, their money is confiscated. You go, wow, this should work. Well, let me ask a simpler question. How much of your disposable income can you afford to put hostage in the middle of the table? And my suspect is very little. So in a system like this, not only you make it easy, you make it possible, but actually make it easy for potential big thieves with deep pockets to put a disproportionate amount of money on the middle of the table for the sole purpose of controlling the blockchain. So if you want to summarize all these approaches we've seen so far, have a, a fatal flaw in my view. Essentially, they put the entirety of the economy at the mercy of a small piece of the economy. That's always a very dangerous thing to do. So what does Algorand do instead? Algorand does a pure proof of stake, which means there is no money hostages, no money can be confiscated. Why? Because I believe it is much better to have a system that cannot be compromised rather than a system whose security depends on our ability to impose fines on others. No money is hostage. Well, if no money is hostage, where is the money? Well, it is where it should be, in my wallet, on my finger strips, in, in, invested in the various financial tools that the blockchain gives us, right? That's what the money is for. That's its natural place. And when you take all this money invested uh, in the wallet, at the finger trip, and you, if the majority of all the money, counted appropriately all over the place, is in honest hands, the system works, period. So there cannot be a small piece of economy to subvert the thing. The only thing ought to be that the majority of the economy decides to suicide collectively, which I don't see this to be a very rational thing to do. So, and what is our approach? The Algorand blockchain is grown by a sequence of ever-changing committees, okay? A committee is elected. What is a committee? It's a committee of a thousand randomly and independent selected users. And what the, each committee member does once he's so selected? Oh, he sends a single, very short, and easy to compute message. Next committee. OK? That's how Algorand pro progress. You know, say, Silvio, if this is how Algorand progress, you know, I have a question. In fact, you should have 
many, 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 many questions, but here is the one that comes most natural. Who selects the damn 1,000 people in the committee? Let's assume that I will tell you, if you don't mind, I do. It says, well, you are as centralized as you can be. Let's assume I will tell you, humanity gets together to choose randomly a 1,000 people who then choose the block. Then we all die before we agree on anything. I mean, uh, <laughs> just uh, look around. So what Algorand does was something a little bit counterintuitive. We allow each committee member to select him or herself. What? If I select myself, and I'm a bad guy, I'm going to select myself immediately. And by the way, I'm going to select myself for the next committee. And non content of that, I'm going to select myself in the next committee still, because I want to be always in power. But not so fast, because what does it mean in Algon to be selected? That you run, each one of us run a cryptographically fair lottery inside your own computer without communicating with anybody, right? And this lottery, case one, you don't, lose, you don't win at all. So whatever you say about the current block, ah, nobody pays attention. Case two, you win, but in such a case, you get a winning ticket. Think of it like a mathematical proof that everybody can see. You are part of this committee, your opinion counts, and you propagate to the network your winning ticket and your opinion about the block, up or down as it may be. Okay, that is the idea. And the ability of uh, winning your lottery is proportional to the amount of money you have. So if you have twice the amount of money as somebody else, you are twice as, uh, um, uh, twice as frequently are going to be part of this committee than somebody else. Is this, is this clear? Now, let me tell you that this approach is super decentralized. Because here, we are not talking about selecting a 1,000 people for the month, or for the week, or for the day, or for the hour. is a 1,000 people, and next, a different 1,000 people. And then, a totally unrelated 1,000 people, right? That is really, truly decentralized. Now, let me tell you that is super scalable. Well, how long does it take you to run this individual lottery inside of your own computer? One microsecond. Click. That's pretty fast, right? So in one microsecond, you say, am I part of this committee, yes or no? That is a very, very fast. And if you are, what do you do? Oh, you send a winning ticket and an up or down approval of a block. Does that scale? Yes, that does scale. Now let me argue that this is super secure. Let's assume that I'm omnipowerful, very scary guy, capable of corrupting anybody I want instantaneously whenever I want. Whom I want to corrupt? The committee. Was, but I have a problem. Who is part of this committee now, of the current committee? Could be you, could be you, can be this lady in the street, this other guy in Thailand. I don't know. But after you come forward and say, here is my winning ticket, and here is my opinion about the block, and this gets propagating, now I see who you are, and now I can corrupt you. But guess what? At that point, Whatever you, you had to say, you already said it. So by corrupting at that point, I gain nothing because your message and proof of membership in the committee is virally propagating the same way, and I cannot put back in the bottle the same way that the US government cannot put back in the bottle a message virally propagated by WikiLeaks, right? So the system is secure because beforehand, I don't know whom I should corrupt, and after the fact, it's too late to corrupt them. And if you put all these things together, that's how Algorand solves the famous trilemma that you remember, used to say that you know, in any blockchain, you cannot be simultaneously decentralized, scalable, and secure. Well, proof. Thousands and thousands of projects are not, but that is not a mathematical proof. So there, are, there is always another way. So, by the way, uh, in a month or so, the Algorand Foundation is going to launch you know, um, uh, the ALGO, our currency, and we've done a lot of progress. But I'd love to essentially uh, highlight that uh, the Algorand Foundation has been joined by a fantastic team uh, uh, led by Tal Rabin, 
a cryptographer, and in fact, uh, her entire team, of, uh, uh, um, uh, a crypto team at IBM, a team which has been working together for a very long time, uh, is moved uh, at Algorand Foundation. And uh, I'm saying cryptographer to cryptographers, hat off, this is a fantastic team. They, we owe them uh, most of the cryptographic primitives that we love uh, and use every day from uh, fancy uh, split key things. Uh, for, and by the way, the inventor of fully homomorphic encryption is part of the team at the Algorand Foundation now. And you know what fully homomorphic encryption is, where you actually compute on encrypted data, and the computation is correct, but you still don't know what the result is, because all, everything remains encrypted forever, right? So, we are very, very proud to have you know, them uh, uh, at the Algorand Foundation. And uh, by the way, the last thing that I want to tell you is about the new technology. I already told you about the consensus, but uh, the consensus is just getting started. <laughs> that is the, the main engine, right? Without the consensus, there is nothing. But having the consensus, we are an innovation-focused blockchain. We have to do a lot more. There is a lot to, to do. And in fact, uh, here is what it's going to be. First of all, with the plain vault, pixel, self-validating transaction, atomic square, really atomic, atomic swaps, post-trade sales, really smart, smart contract, and on and on and on. But you know, there is no time in the eight minutes left to somehow tell them about all of them. So I decided to choose one, vault and atomic, atomic swaps. So let me start with Vault. What is Vault? Vault is Algorand's answer to the blockchain storage problem. What is the problem? That even a slow blockchain, give it enough time, and now you have a terabyte of data, right? What does this mean? That centralization raises its ugly egg again, because very few people can store a terabyte of data. Or if you want to join the chain now, oh, welcome. Start the downloading, I'll see you in three months, and by the way, when, when you're done, you can um, participate. Really? That does not work. So if you want to maintain decentralization, you must solve this problem. To have efficient onboarding, efficiently growing the chain, and actually allow efficient retrieval of uh, things past. So here is how we do it. You want to join Algorand? We are going to give you a very compact piece of information. That's all you need to know to grow the chain forward. And uh, each time you keep on updating this compact piece of information so it's compact on day one when you join and remains compact on day 100, 1,000, a million. Okay? So by the way, once I give you this compact piece of information, how do you know it's right? Well, because we give it to you together with a proof that you are receiving the compact piece of information to grow the chain forward. So that means that if you receive this piece of information and you check the proof is correct, there is no difference between a full node who has been on the chain from day one, storing everything all, all along, and you. But there is one difference. How about past data? If somebody asking, oh, here with you just a joint algorithm, what is a block number three of five years ago? Well, if you joined a month ago, you cannot possibly do that. But the people who store it, they can provide this information, but once more, they are going to provide this information with a proof of its correctness. Okay? And so, but, and I believe that this is going to have, give some financial incentive to keep the history of the chain. We will keep it anyway, Algorand Inc., Algorand Foundation will keep it anyway. If you are uh, really a fan of Algorand and a lot depends on your uh, and on your economic future, you'll keep it too, but otherwise just ask the people to do it and they will be, for a fee for a service, tell you with a proof. So nobody can get, right? That is the way, without this, centralization is going to come again. And now let me tell you a bit about atomic swaps. You know uh, what an atomic swap is, right? There is a user who has X that you want, say for instance, a building or an apartment, and there use another user was Y that you want, that I want. It could be a boat or money, right? And what do we want to do? We want to exchange. Sure, you go first and transfer to me on the blockchain what I want, and I promise that I will transfer you what you want. 
So he said, well, with due respect, let's go the other way around. So now there is, as you know, atomic swaps have the name atomic in English, but they are not atomic at all. There are a sequence of steps, multiple steps, with lock, uh, time locks, with hash locks, and they move a song and dance, are very complicated, right? A few hours later, maybe we swap, or maybe we not. So what is the idea instead here? The idea is we have both signatures of these users to agree on the swap, but you allow also a compact proof that up to the last block, the first user own his own asset. And, you, and, and the second prover, um, uh, user provides a proof that up to the last block, she own her own asset. So if you are now a verifier of, of the transaction, and you see, well, here is this pair of people who want to swap. Do they own what they want to swap? You have a proof on a silver platter in front of you. You don't have to scavenge uh, storage, whatever is storage in the blockchain at all. And bingo, you take this and you put it in the blockchain right away. So the advantage here that you do this in a single transaction. That's why, by the way, nobody can cheat anybody else. Because in a single transaction, either both people get what they want or nobody does. End of story. 